One of the most interesting visual effects out there is creating a miniature look with a tilt shift lens. But you don't actually need the lens to do it when you've got the right post-production software. Here's how to create the tilt shift effect with your footage in Adobe After Effects. Since your goal is to replicate the look and feel of a scale model, follow these steps when choosing shots for your effect. If there's no change in the frame, the miniature effect may not translate as well. It's why most tilt shift shots are of cars, people, boats, and other busy scenes. Most tilt shift videos you see are time lapses because our eyes think of tiny things as moving very quickly. Make sure to keep a shutter speed over 60 to keep everything sharp. The longer your focal length, the more compressed everything will be in the shot, resulting in a better miniature effect. You're trying to replicate a scale model, so make sure your subject or objects appear fairly small in the frame. Looking down at the scene is crucial because it makes objects appear smaller and gives you a bigger area to see in the shot. Since toys are very vibrant and colorful, the video should also be very saturated, whether it's shot that way or done in post, which we'll go over later. Get started by importing your footage and making a new composition with it. If it's real-time footage, you can mimic a high shutter time lapse by right-clicking the clip and selecting Time Stretch, then putting in the percentage to get your desired clip duration. Pre-compose this clip, naming it Footage, and apply the posterized time effect. Adjust the effect to your desired frame rate. If you want to keep your footage in real time, or your clip is already a time lapse, just pre-compose this layer and name it Footage. Now it's on to the blur map. A blur map is essentially a layer with a gradient that tells the blur effect what shape and pattern to take. There are several methods to use, but let's do a couple of very basic ways to make the gradient. To use a mask, create an adjustment layer and place it on top of the pre-comped footage layer. Add a camera lens blur from your effects on this layer and hold off on doing anything with the controls until you've created the actual blur map. Now make a new white solid. Pre-compose this solid and open it, naming it Blur Map. Click the rectangle tool or press Q and draw a long skinny mask horizontally across the center of the solid that hangs over the edges of the canvas. Then invert your mask so that the black is in the middle and feather it 100 pixels to start. Go back to your composition with the adjustment layer, turn off the Blur Map layer and go to the effect controls. Check the Repeat Edge Pixels box first, then set a blur radius of 30. Change the shape to your desired bokeh look, then boost the diffraction fringe to 50 as a starting point. Now set the blur map to your blur map layer. You should now see the effect applied to your footage using the blur map pattern. If you'd rather use an effect for the blur map, create a new black solid and place it above the footage layer. Apply the light sweep effect to the solid and adjust the angle to go across the part you'd like to be in focus. Expand the width over 100 for now and turn the edge intensity all the way down Then make sure the sweep intensity is at least 100 so that there's pure white in the middle, which will be the part of the clip that's in focus. Pre-compose this solid and name it matte. Now you should have two layers, with the footage layer on top and a matte layer below. Apply the camera lens blur effect to the footage layer and click the repeat edge pixels box, set the blur radius to 30, change the blur shape, and set the diffraction to 50, just as in the mask method. Finish up by setting the blur map to the matte layer and checking the box to invert the blur map. With either one of these setups, you should play back and adjust the mats as necessary. Add some grain for a more realistic look, then boost the saturation with the hue saturation effect to 20 to 30 to start and see how it looks. A masked blur map gives you a lot more freedom with making custom shapes, but it can also be more work. A light sweep blur map takes less time, but you only get one shape to work with. It all depends on your preference and which results you'd like better. Just remember that your goal is to have a very sharp depth of field. Using the tilt shift effect is a simple way to add eye-popping visual language to your videos and shows a brand new perspective of a scene. And even though most tilt shift shots are locked down, it never hurts to experiment with movement because it can look great if it's done well. If you like this video, check out our YouTube channel and subscribe for more tutorials. You can also read the Pond5 blog for an in-depth companion piece, as well as other filmmaking tips and tricks. And as always, head over to Pond5.com to get millions of video clips and other assets to use in your next project.